Hello everyone and welcome to the beginning of this video series. This video series is in association with the Indian Skills One CAD teaching material. What we'll be looking at here is how to create an assembly model in Fusion 360. And we'll be looking at a case study of a ball valve. So the title of this series is labelled as Ball Valve Assembly Modeling Tutorial. So moving on through, this is what the ball valve looks like itself and hopefully by the end of this video series you have been able to build a model that looks exactly like this. The series itself is going to contain 10 segments, so right now we're looking at the model overview discussing the series itself. We'll then move on to file management, how we set up an assembly file, applying joints 1, 2 and 3, how we can combine components together with some mechanical constraints. We're we'll going to look at the Mastercard library in video 7 and 8 and how to bring in some predefined, pre made components from a standard library. How we can set up joint limits in Fusion 360. And then we'll finish the series by, how, by displaying how to save and explore our, our Fusion assembly files. And as always, everyone, you can contact myself at eng fusion at glasgow.ac.uk. Okay, so let's have a look at the CAD model itself, what we're hoping to achieve by the end of this series. So this is the ball valve that we're again hoping to build by the end of this tutorial series. It is made up of a series of components and some standard components from the McMaster car library. All components will be provided to yourself through the middle on the Indian Skills 1 assembly modeling middle page which we discussed in the next video and the fasteners they will be brought in from the master car library and then we'll also look at how to set up some joints now we can control the movement of our components in fusion 360. so thanks for tuning in everyone and i will see you in the next video where we'll get started building this assembly model Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in this assembly modeling tutorial series. So what we'll be discussing and covering in this video is the file management and essentially where to download the files to create this assembly file of the ball valve. So what we need to do is we need to go over on to the assembly modeling middle page. So if you're watching this video you sh should have access to the uh, Assembly Modeling Middle Page. Um, so it's CAD Assembly Modeling and then Indian Skills 1 um, Middle Page. By the time the curriculum has run at this point, the page might look slightly different, but not to worry. The most important aspect of this video series is having access to the folder that's titled CAD Assembly Modeling Download and Completed. And if I click into this folder, you have a zip folder. And in this zip folder includes all the components required to build this assembly model. So what we want to do is we want to download this zip folder. So if I left click, I'm going to download to my local PC. And you want to do the same. Once it's downloaded, we want to click the dialog arrow and hit show in folder. Because it is a zip folder, we want to right click and we want to extract all. And we want to decide on locations. So you want to make sure um, whatever desktop, laptop, um, university, PC that you have access to the location where this folder is going to be extracted to. So I'm going to browse and I'm just going to put this into downloads and then select folder and just put into downloads. Okay. So extract. There we go. Okay. So now it's extracted and I have assembly modern close down. Double click in, I can see I have access to the various files required to complete this assembly model. So now that I have them downloaded, I then need to upload them on to Fusion. So let's hover on to Fusion and let's discuss the best file management for uploading parts and the best file management for creating this assembly model. So what we want to do is we want to set up a new project folder. Um, 
and our data panel. So if we go up to the top left and click on show data panel, I've already for the tutorial to set up a folder. Okay, I've got this ball bar tutorial. So I have some previous um, material in this folder, and that's fine. You may be the same. But we want to define a folder for this exact um, process. So if I right click on here and I delete, so yes, to confirm. What I want to do is I want to click new folder up here, so left click confirm, and I want to label the top level folder that I want to upload my parts to. So again, I'm just going to name it as ball valve tutorial and press enter to confirm. I then want to double click into the folder so I'm now in the sub level and this is where I want to upload those files I've just downloaded from the Moodle. So if I left, left click on upload, select files and now I need to go to the location where my files are saved. So this might be slightly different for you. So again, I want to reiterate, you want to make sure you have access to the location where you save these files to. So for me, it was in downloads. I'm going to click on the, um, the extracted folder. And then I have access to the various fusion files. You will see at the bottom that the A3 college template and the A3 university template is included in this download. So that's fine, don't worry about it. We don't, if you haven't uploaded it, you can just leave it. Or so if you have uploaded it previously, you can just leave it. I just like to keep the, the drawing template and all the course down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight, so left click and drag and window select all of the fusion files. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten files uploaded. Okay. So with all the files highlighted, I want to click on the open button. And this will upload them on the Fusion. Once we click on the Upload button down here in the bottom right, so left click Confirm. And after a period of time, our folder will start to populate, and all the files required to create this assembly will gradually build into this folder. Okay, so again, this the time um, to, to do this will depend on the software, or sorry, depend on the device you're using. Maybe a little bit quicker, a little bit slower, and what might upload to that. So if I click close confirm, I now can see that my folder for this project has uploaded all the necessary files required um, to create this assembly. So essentially all the files are all the components that you can see here in the pre-made um, folder assembly. Okay, so there's a lot of videos showing how we can download files and then upload them on to Fusion. So again, very important that we have access to these um, component files because we're going to use them to build the ball valve assembly itself. So thanks for tuning in everyone. I will see you all in the next video when we will begin building the Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video in this assembly modeling tutorial series. So what we were looking at and discussing in this video is how to set up our assembly file, save it, bring in our first part and how to ground it, essentially lock it in the 3D model space. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the pre-made ball valve assembly and this is essentially what we want to build by the end of this video series. What we have on the left side panel here is the parts that we downloaded in the last video that we downloaded off of the Moodle page. And what we're going to look at here is how we can bring in some of these parts, or how we can bring in the first part from these um, pre-made parts and build an assembly upon them. Okay, so as previously mentioned, we're going to use the pre-made ball valve as a reference to go along as we progress with our fresh model. Okay. So I'm going to use a timeline on this pre-made model. I'm going to take it all the way back to the start. So I'm going to hit back to the start button. Okay. And as the series progresses, I'm going to gradually flick through the next steps and use it as a visual representation as um, to demonstrate what is coming up next. Okay. So again, I'm going to go back to the start. And what we want to achieve by the end of this video is saving our file, bringing in the first part, which is the inlet housing and then grounding it 
the 3D model space, essentially locking it into its position. So I go back one step and I click on the model and drag it around. I can currently move it and it sticks in its current state. But if I press Ctrl Z and come back, and I flick forward one step, this little um, pin appears. And that's a symbol for it being grounded, so it's a ground symbol. And with that activated on a component, if I left click and drag, I can't move it, it's fixed to the 3D model space. And there's a super critical part of assembly and modeling in any CAD software, and Fusion 360 is no different to that. Grounding your object fixes it to the 3D model space, and it means when you apply any joints, constraints, um, motion studies, um, any joints in general, it doesn't fly away and go into random places on the 3D model space. Okay? So let's carry on and let's crack on and let's build our assembly design. Okay? So to do that, we want to come up to this top right um, cross where it says new design. And we're going to left click to confirm we're starting a new design. Okay? So when bringing components in to build an assembly on, so insert a design, we want to come over to our data panel, which is open here on the left side of my screen. If yours isn't and your data panel is hidden, you may have to come to the top left and click Show Data Panel. And that's how we can bring the data panel on and off. So again, as previously mentioned, this is the files that we've downloaded from the Moodle in the last video. And we want to now start bringing these files into our assembly um, design. Okay? So the process for this, to bring a, a file in, so we want to bring in the inlet housing. So if I right click and hit ins uh, insert into current design, it actually won't let me and I'll get an error that says please save this design before inserting components. And that's fine. So same with any component modeling, part modeling, we want to go up and use the little save file here and save our assembly. So it's going to be top level assembly, so I'm just going to name this ball valve assembly similar to what I did in my previous exercise and I'm going to save it as this okay and again our data panel in this project folder the ball valve assembly will begin to be built here and this is the assembly file here okay now with the file saved I can right click again and click insert into current design and now because I've saved this file it will bring in my component okay so if I zoom out to give ourselves a bit of a better perspective, I'm actually going to close the data panel at this point, just to give myself some more screen space. Um, I, have, I have the option of capabilities to adjust the position that the inlet housing comes in. So that's going to leave it in the position it comes in, but I just want to show you that you can actually manipulate it using the draggers um, or the arrows. Okay, I'm going to just put it back to zero. And I'm going to adjust this back to, to 90. And if you're ever unsure, you can always press Ctrl Z back and tap on your position. Okay? So you can adjust the position of um, the component using the various draggers, scale it, you can pick pivot points, um, whatever it may be. You can translate, you can adjust it that way. Um, you can rotate directly from the axis. Again, rotate there and escape to drop the selection. If you drop the selection and you want to move the component, you can, you can left click it here and press M on the keyboard and you can change the move object to components, select it and you can move it that way. Okay. You can also select it on the timeline here on the component tree. You can left click here, you can hit move on the modify panel or again you can press the hold key M and you have the capabilities to move it. Okay, I'm going to cancel this and as previously mentioned, the position that the component is brought in at, we want to leave it as it is. Okay, I'm just showing the capabilities that you can move the position of the components using the various um, drag and move features. Okay, so I'll, the last thing we want to do, we bring our origin component because we know that this component is going to be fixed. We don't want to move this component. We don't want to join this to anything else. 
we will join um, future components to the inlet housing, but we essentially we don't want this component to move around. Okay, so I'm going to press Control Z to bring it back to the origin spot. So where it's sitting just now, we want to ground, we want to fix to the 3D model space. So to do that, we want to left click on the component here, we want to right click, and we want to select ground. Okay, and now if I select this component and drag, it doesn't move, it's fixed to the 3D model space, it can't move. Okay. So that's how we set up an assembly file, that's how we can insert a component, move it if need be, but in this case we don't want to move it, um, and that's how we can ground it and fix it to its current state so it can't move. Okay, thank you for tuning in everyone, and I will see you all. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video in this assembly modelling tutorial series. So what we were looking at today is how we can bring components in and then join them to other parts of the assembly. Essentially align them and join them to other parts, um, other part components. Okay, so we'll look at a reference piece here. So this is our ball valve, our ball valve assembly. We're going to scroll back the timeline and we're going to go through what we're going to plan to cover in this video. Okay, so last video we brought our inlet housing in and we grounded it to 3D modeling space. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to bring in a couple parts and join them. So we flick through each step individually, change our perspective so we have a better view of what's happened. We're going to bring in the ball seat component. We're then going to apply a joint, so this is the symbol for joints just now, and I'll explain them in a little bit more detail um, when we look at our assembly model. We're then going to bring in the seal, and we're then going to apply the seal to the ball seat itself. Okay, so let's go on over to our ball valve assembly that we are creating in this tutorial series, and let's bring in the components in question. Okay. So we're going to open up our show data panel up in the top left corner here, open that up, and we're going to bring in the ball seat, okay? We're going to left click to confirm, right click to open the dialog box, and we're going to insert into current design. Give it some time to load in. I'm going to click the top right of the view cube, so we have a better perspective, and now we can see the ball seat, okay? So as this assembly was built, um, using a top-down modeling approach, the components are really going to come in where they should be placed, but they aren't joined, um, they're still able to, to float in space. So I have to press OK just to confirm the, the drop here, I could click and drag and move this anywhere. But if I go back over to the completed ball valve assembly, if I click on the components, because the joints have been applied, um, they can't move, they're fixed to the grounded component. Okay, so that's what we want to do with this ball valve, okay? And where we want to place it is, so it's going to sit on this lip here, on this inner face, okay? And we want it to match up with the inner face here, okay? So we're actually going to use this edge here as a reference, and we want to align this edge to this edge here, okay? So it's completely fixed. These two faces are essentially mating, okay? So what we're going to do here is, we're going to use the join commands in Fusion, and these are the assembly um, constraint tools that fix components together. They give components um, motion relationships. It isn't always rigid. They can revolve. They have um, they can have cylindrical um, movements. They can have slide movements, etc., etc., etc. Okay, but for this one, we're going to fix it in space, and we're going to use a rigid um, the rigid join. So I'm going to close the data panel for the moment just to give ourselves some more um, screen space and we're going to apply the joints. Okay, so the joints are actually located up on the assembly toolbar and there we have the joint tool here. Okay, and as you can see here we also have the hotkey J attached to it. So if we press J this command would activate. And again with the command the highlighted it tells us in the dialog box to the right here Positions components relative to one another and defines the relative motion. Select geometry or joint origins to define the joint 
specify the type to define the relative motion. Okay, so we're going to work with confirm we want to create a joint, we want to create a joint, and because, so we can see right now that the ball seat isn't actually, um, isn't actually, um, it's, it isn't greyed out, it's, it's still in its same um, um, colour scheme. And if you look at the inlousing, it's gone wireframe, um, we can't move it. And the reason for that is because we've applied the ground um, tool to it, because it can't move, it can't go be joined to something else. It can receive um, joint stone. And again, if I click on the references that we want to use here, so we need to click on this edge here, okay? If I left click to confirm, let's zoom up to give ourselves a bit of a better perspective. We can see that we can now click on the um, the, the, the inlet housing, okay? But if I draw the snap select here, again, I can't connect it. So I have the snap select here, um, I, can't, I can't connect it, okay? If we click the second dialog um, box here, it says motion, we can determine which type of motion we want to use. So this has been discussed in previous leather material. Um, the type we want to use for construing components in a solid position is the rigid type. Okay, so we want to make sure that rigid is selected. You can always go back and change it, and I'll show you that in a minute, but it is good work in practice to select the motion you want to use straight away. Okay, so go back to position, and um, we want to use our first snap, and um, we want to snap this edge here, and we're going to place it on this edge here. Okay, so left click confirm, highlight the edge, and there we go, this snaps down. Okay, you can adjust um, joints, you can move them, um, adjust them if you wanted to fix the position, but not the case in this situation, we're going to leave it um, completely fixed and rigid on that area. Okay, so we're going to OK to confirm, and we're going to bring in the next component, which was the seal. So again, we'll go back to our reference piece, and we want to bring in the seal, go back one, so we're going to bring in the seal. We want to fix it so it's flush on this space here. Okay, so let's go back to our ball valve, open up the show data panel and locate the seal. So seal's here, left click to confirm, right click to open the dialog box, and we're going to insert it to cut it to see. Okay, as previously mentioned, because this assembly has been built in a top down modeling process, the geometry's initial position is essentially where it's going to be. But okay, like I said, it hasn't fixed, it hasn't joined, so we need to move it and then constrain it. Okay, so just using the dragger here, I'm going to drag the component out of the way so we have space to apply the joints. Okay, to confirm the position just now, but again, because we haven't applied any joints, it's free to move around in the model space. So let's select it. So let's, do, actually, let's talk about where we're going to place it. So essentially, you want this seal, this space here. To be flush against this face here. It's going to sit in that little groove. Okay. So we really want to connect, we'll go from the, the seal. We want to connect this edge here and we want to place it directly against this edge, which will then in turn make this face of this face here. Okay. So we're going to use a hotkey here. Again, you always want to use hotkeys if possible. And we're going to use a hotkey to bring up the joint command and that is G. So pressing G. Activates the joint command and we can now apply some joints. So we're going to connect the seal to the ball seat. Okay, and we're going to select this edge here. So hover over the edge, left click to confirm, left click to confirm on the main edge, and there we go. And we can see our seat sitting nicely in there. Okay, so before we close off this video, I'm going to show you a little, a, a good tool to use in all aspects of 3D modeling, and it is a section of view tool which is located up on the inspect toolbar. Okay, so if it's here in your UI, you can select the drop down, and section analysis is there. Okay, so if I click section analysis, and if I highlight over it, it always gives a little uh, brief. And what it says here, there is a cutaway view of the models through a face or a plane. Okay, so I'm going to left click the button to confirm and again if I select a face here so it's asking to select a face it cuts halfway through it so we can see okay so I'm going to drop the selection here and I'm going to show you how it can be utilized to see internal components so I'm rotating around 
and I'm going to try and select this plane here. Okay, if you can't select it, if it doesn't highlight this um, side plane here, if you hold in the left mouse button, if you go down the drop down, it gives you um, sub features, sub faces, sub components that you can select. So we're going to select this YZ plane. Okay, that hit OK to confirm. I can now look at this component through a section view. Now allows you to see where my components are um, mated against each other because we've cut halfway through using a section plane tool. So we have our inlet housing here. We then have the ball seat sitting flush against this um, section here. And then we have our steel itself sitting flush on the groove in the ball seat. Okay. And that's what it looks like there. To turn off the section view, the analysis is located on the UI here. So you can turn it off here and it completely turns it all off. But you can click the sub menu and you can have the section view there. Okay. We can turn it off and we're back to our view. Thanks for tuning in everyone and I'll see you all in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video in this assembly modeling tutorial series. In this video we will continue bringing in some of our pre-made components and joining them to other components in our assembly. So looking at our finished ball valve assembly as a reference piece, we're going to scroll back and we're going to flick through the parts we're going to cover in this series. Okay. I'm going to change our perspective here and we're going to flex we have the seal in position. So this is what we got to last time. We brought in the ball seat and we brought in the seal and we joined them, we constrained them um, into the inlet housing. Okay. In this video here, we're going to bring in the outlet flange. Okay, so that's the outlet flange here. We're then going to join it on to the inlet housing. Next it, we're going to fix it onto there, so we're going to the same um, central axis, line up the mounting holes on either side. And we are then going to bring in the top flange, okay, it's the flange component there, and we're going to fix it into the position there. Okay, so let's go over to our valve assembly that we are building in this tutorial series, okay. So we're going to open up our show data panel and we're going to bring in the outlet flange. Okay, so our outlet flange is located here. Left click to confirm, right click to insert into current design and we're going to bring it in to the model space here. Okay, so we're going to drag it out so we have some space to apply some joints. Okay, to confirm the selection. And again, it's not joint, it's not constrained, but it's free to move around. And as we know, if we're building um, any kind of housing, any assembly, we don't want things to be flying around. So we want to fix it into position. Okay, so there's a few ways we can do this. We could essentially line this space with this edge here even. Okay, those two edges. We could join this edge here and this edge here. Okay, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select the join tool and we're going to line up one of the mounting holes. Okay, so we're going to select this edge here. So what it's referring to there is, oh sorry for that. If I hover over the edge here, it's selecting the edge of the hole and as we have the, um, the three axes coming through it, that tells us it's going to select the middle of the hole. Okay. If you're ever struggling to select a point on a face, say for example we wanted to select the midpoint of the component here, okay, the midpoint of this edge, but we couldn't quite get it. If I hover over the face in question, and hold in the control button, it snaps to all the defined points or all the snap points on that um, specific piece of geometry. So that then allows me to select the midpoint of that. So again, all you want to do is hover over the face in question, hold in the control button on your keyboard, and that will snap to all the pieces of um, geometry that are eligible. Okay. But for this specific component here, we're going to just hover over the edge of the hole, left click to confirm, and we're going to line it up with the corresponding hole on the um, inlet housing. And it's going to be 
top right on this face, top left on this face. So hover over, select the edge of the whole question, left click to confirm, and then lines up the component. Okay. Again, okay to confirm the joint selection. And always do this a little uh, tester. I'm going to select the comp component, drag it. Yep, and I can't put it anywhere. It's rigid. It can't move. It's fixed to the inlet housing. Okay. So this component we're going to bring in is the flange. So open up our show data panel. Um, or click the show data panel button. And we're going to figure out where the flange is. So the flange is here. We're going to set it into current design. And it's going to place in the correct position, yep. And we're going to close the data panel to give us some more um, screen space. And I'm just going to press OK to confirm. OK. And I'm going to drag it off so we know it's how we're placing it. So as you can see, it's actually brought through a construction plane. So this construction plane was used in the um, modelling of this um, flange. We don't want the construction plane just now. Sometimes you can use construction plane as reference geometry but we don't need it at this moment in time. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can go down to the component and drop down a subtree, a sub-level. So the origin, the body, the sketches, the construction and assembly context of the flange itself. So if I turn off the construction plane here using the show hide toggle button, the little eye, I can turn it off there. Um, I could individually turn off that specific plane. And another way to do it is if you just select the plane itself, left click to confirm and press V on your keyboard, left click to click away, it takes you to the construction plane. Okay, so where we want this flange to sit is we want this face here to be connected to this face. Okay, and we want to line up um, either through one of these holes, the holes here, or the central plane here. So again, either or would be fine. But I'm going to use the join tool. So join here or press J on the keyboard. And I'm going to select this hole here, this edge here. Left click confirm. And I'm just going to line that up with this hole here. And again, I'm going to make sure with my motion that it's rigid. I don't want it to rotate. I don't want it to slide about that axis. I don't want it to make a cylindrical motion. I don't want it to be a pin slot, um, planar, um, I don't want it to have a ball joint. Okay, so I want to make sure it's rigid. First component is going to be fixed on top of the outlet flange. Okay, so I'm going to press OK to confirm, and that's how we connect our flange to our outlet flange. Okay, thanks for tuning in, everyone, and I will see you all in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in this ball valve assembly tutorial series. In this video we'll be looking at how we can bring in a series of components and build them into essentially a sub-assembly and then place them into the assembly itself. So let's look at our reference components here, our reference assembly, and let's scroll back to where we left off at last time. So it was, if I'm not mistaken, we had just brought in the outlet flange and the top flange and we placed them into the assembly. So what we're going to be looking at here is, we're going to bring in the handle shaft, the ball, the handle, let's get a little bit of a better perspective, um, the handle cover and also the lock lever. And what we're going to do is, we're then going to build these, we're going to join these together out with the main assembly context, build them into a little sub-assembly, and then place them into the main assembly. Okay, so let's go over to our assembly that we're building in this tutorial series, and let's bring in the components. So let's open up our data panel, so clicking on the show data panel button up here, and we are going to bring in the handle shaft. Right click to bring it to design. Again, not too fussed about the position, let's just bring it away from the assembly just now. Okay to confirm the position. We're then going to bring in the ball, which is going to sit on the seal to stop water flow and allow water to flow. And again, just place it anywhere on the screen. So a little bit of a D 
do this process here. Feel free to speed up this part of the video if you just want to bring all the components in. Handle cover. Okay, that's fine. Just leave that there. Handle cover and the handle itself. So we missed the handle, but that's okay. We'll bring it in. And then the lock lever is our last component. Okay, just bring the handle over there. And do 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 lock lever. Okay, that's it. The kind of thing. So we have the five components brought in that we require. And we're going to close the data panel. And what I'm going to do is just quickly, I'm going to turn off all of these planes. So clicking the plane and pressing V, you can do it on the, the drop down component menus themselves. So I'm going to go to the ball. It looks like the origin's coming through here. So origin on off. Um, that's origin here. Okay, so if you're ever unsure where a piece of geometry, a uh, construction plane origin is, if you click on it, you get a little, um, almost a dashed line before the component is referenced to. So if I drop down the handle submenu and tub, uh, turn it off the origin, that will remove. That will, that will disappear. Okay? So we've brought in our components. Let's now apply them, apply some joints to constrain them together. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the shaft to the ball. So we're going to select the middle of the bottom face here. And we're going to join it on to the middle of this groove right on the hole. So again, if you select over the face and you want to select the midpoint, sometimes it will snap to it, but you can also hold down control and it'll snap to that midpoint. So we're going to press left, click to confirm, and hit OK. OK, OK. We're then going to connect the handle to the top of the shaft. So we're going to use joint, select the top face, hold down control, we want to select the middle and you want to select the midpoint of the top face here. Okay, so as you can see, that's definitely another orientation that we're looking for. And to adjust that, to realign that, we can select flip and it'll flip it, flip it back over. Okay, so right now we've connected the ball to the, the bottom of the handle and we've connected the handle to the top of the shaft there. Okay, so the bottom of the shaft, the ball, top of the shaft, to the, um, the handle. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to put the handle cover on and we might need to do some manipulation with numbers here. So we're going to select joint and we're going to adjust our screen. So I'm just, you know, holding that shaft, pressing the middle mouse button and rotating around. And I want to select this internal face here. Okay. So I'm going to well reference here is the midpoint of this top face. So I'm going to show you again. So I could highlight over here, the left mouse button and scroll down that way. So that's the face I want in there. Okay, the internal one, you can click there, and I say I want to align that to here. Okay, so select the snap, snap to there. Okay, so again, position is not quite right, so you can just drag it up, and it will snap. Okay, so pull it down, pull it up, and it will snap. If the snap on your instance doesn't work correctly, for something like a handle cover, we are it's just going to slide over um, in a real world situation. You can just manually pull it, pull it up and press and um, type in some numbers. So we could just type in three. Okay, three doesn't work. Let's try four. Not quite. Five, and it's covered the handle there. Okay, so you can man you can manually adjust the offset um, if the snap doesn't work. Okay, again, snap. You can bring down. Okay, bring it down, it may snap on, or you can just finally punch in the numbers until you get a nice clean fit on the handle. Okay, so let's manually put in some joint alignments to um, pursue the component. So we want to press OK to confirm. And the last piece we want it to connect is this little lock lever. We want to go in between our component here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to hit joint. And we want to select the top, middle of the top face. So hover over the face in question. Hold down control and select in that middle snap. Or left clicking to confirm. Rotating around. Selecting the face we want to snap to. And again, again, we want it to be in the middle. Hold down control and we want to snap to there. Okay. Excellent. Okay to confirm. 
kind of comes down to load through, the joint's been applied. Excellent. Okay. So we've now built this little sub assembly. We want to connect it into a component here. So what we want is we want the bottom of the lock lever, okay, the middle of the bottom of the lock lever to align with this top face to the hole on the flange. Okay. So we're going to press J to have a joint command. Again, if you the hot key, if you don't want to use a hotkey, you can press the command up here in the assembly toolbar. Selecting the hover over the face in question, hold down control and select the middle snap. Okay. As you can see a component has been greyed out, we're referencing that component as a snap. We're going to hover over the flange, top flange, hold down control and snap it on to there. Okay. Press OK to confirm and all of our components have came through. Okay. We're going to adjust that joint, but at the moment I want to show you how we how we can check that our components are lined up correctly. So we have a settings analysis um, selector attached from earlier on in the series. If I turn that on, I get a section view. I'm just going to show you once more if you don't currently have the section analysis. So I'm going to right click on the section and press delete. I'm going to go up to the inspect toolbar, section analysis, get if it isn't there near your UI. You can select sex analysis from here. Select the plane, again if you can't quite get it, hold in the, the left mouse button. Scroll down the sub menu and select YZ for that right plane. Okay. Okay to confirm. And we're going to select right on our view cube. Okay. Double click our middle mouse button to get an even perspective. As we can see, our ball is sitting nicely in our seal. Our shafts align right to the middle of our component. The shoulder is sitting flush on the um, the flange so the shaft can come up. Our lock lever is pressing correctly and our handle is sitting flush on our handle shaft. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the sex analysis just now. Okay. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to adjust this this um, this joint because we want to have capabilities to actually adjust and rotate this handle, essentially adjusting the ball valve, the ball itself. Okay, so we're going to go back into our joint sub-menu and we're going to click on the last joint we just applied, which was this rigid joint. Okay, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to edit joint and I'm going to change this to revolve, uh, revolut, okay, revolut. And it should now be able to rotate. I'm going to press OK to confirm. And if I now adjust the handle, I can now rotate it around. OK. And if I adjust the perspective, I can see that now my ball valve, my internal ball rotates. And I can close off the flow of water or maybe oil. OK. So right now it was in the closed position. And if I open it up, you can see our ball has been removed. And again, you can turn on the section view, the section view to get a better analysis of this. And this is what it looks like in the component. We're blocked off. Again, half our stuff's been removed. But we can see that if we click on the component and move our mouse, it's rotating around. Okay. So that's how we can apply a revolt joint and how we can rotate our components in an assembly process. Okay. To get it back to the initial position, if we come up to the top right, we can click on revert position. So at this point, we don't want to capture the position our components in, so I'm going to adjust our perspective here. If I click on revert position, it will go back to the position that the handle was in when we applied that um, red on its own. Okay. Just to quickly recap that and go over it one more time, we could just apply the red on joint from the start. So if I was to delete this, Okay, so if I was to delete this joint here, okay, and if I use the joint tool once more, and if I selected this face, the midpoint of the face, um, if I change the motion to revolute or straight off the bat, which the, the proper work in practice, if I then went and selected the snap to be on the midpoint or the top of the flange, the joint would be applied straight away. That would have the capabilities of rotating around. Okay. 
And again, if I turn off some of the components, now we get a better view of this. We'll turn off the big lot housing and these components here. And you can see that the ball is moving inside a component. Okay, turn it back on. And I'll revert position. Okay. So that's how we can build sub-assemblies um, and apply them into our main assembly context. Um, that's how we can apply a revlet joint and we can rotate and move components inside other components. Okay, thanks for tuning in everyone and I will see you all in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video in this assembly modeling tutorial series. What we'll be discussing and looking at in this video is how to utilise the Mastercard library, which is essentially a sub-library of engineering components that you can bring in and use in your Fusion 360 models. So looking at our reference model here, our pre-built ball valve, I'm going to scroll back on our timeline to the start of what we're going to discuss in this video. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is how we bring in components. So as I skip through the steps, we'll see components um, starting to um, populate into the model space. So just click into the next step, bring in the nut, bring in another washer, applying it to our component, washer nut, bring in the bolt, applying the bolt, doing some um, file management Tidy up, so we're creating a component where we're going to put all of, so creating an essential assembly where we're going to apply all the components to. Again, we're going to have assembly, so we'll turn this off, all the components are located under this bolt assembly. Copying these bolt assemblies to be applied, put them in the um, associated holes, and then again, creating some more housekeeping. Okay, so what we can then do is place all the components into one fastener um, top level assembly. Okay, so let's go on over to our ball valve that we're building and let's start having a look at the unit master car library and how we can bring in some components. Okay, so we're going to bring in um, an M10 by 50 bolt assembly. So we're going to bring in the bolt, we're going to bring in the washer and we're going to bring in an M10. No. Okay, so to get access to this library, we want to come over to the mass. Sorry, we want to come over to the insert toolbar, and we want to scroll down to the insert master car component. So you can set this up on your toolbar. You can pin the shortcuts. Also, the toolbar is actually there. My bad. The UI for this is here. Apologies about that. So this is the insert master car component UI. Okay, so you, if you can see the symbol on your toolbar. You can click and activate it here, or you could click here. Okay. And what happens is it brings you to the sub menu. So what the Mastercard actually is, it's an American private um, wholesaler of various different types of industrial components. As you can see, screws, bolts, rods, eye bolts, washers, um, shims, completely everything um, from glue to tape, welding components, yeah, everything pipes and joints, a whole host of your components. The library is humongous. Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can go and find your components. You can click the icon here and you could start to determine the size. You can go metric through here and pick your thread pitch on the sub menu on the left here. If you wanted a specific type you could go through here. You could type in here so we could essentially go uh, type in nuts and you can get a nuts sub menu here. We could type in, let's say, a tie rod. Okay, if you go tie rod ends, um, and we can have some tie rods from there. If we need individual component name, we could punch it in here and it would come through. Okay, but what we're going to bring through here is some M M12 by sorry M10 by 50 bolts. And to do that, we're going to type in bolts up here. And we can take it to the sub menu. Okay, so the system of measurement we want to use metric because that's the system of measurement that we're using. The thread size, we want to define it as a M10. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so it's easier for you all to see. Okay, 
So we've got a um, system of measurement as metric, a thread size as M10. Um, okay. The length we want to define as 50. So this is the, this is the length of the threaded part. Okay. It's the length of the threaded part. And the thread pitch we want to make 1.5. Okay. Look. So as you can see, we've got a whole host of bolts that are available to us. Okay. The type of bolt that we want to use for this is a, let me see if I can find it, it's an alloy steel socket head screw, and we could pick socket head from here and it comes through. Okay, so we've got alloy steel socket head screw, fully threaded or partially threaded. Okay, partially threaded is going to be ideal for us, we don't need the full thread. When we click on the partially threaded UI, it just brings closer and closer to what's available to us. Okay. So we've got the M10, uh, sorry, M10 um, by 1.5 thread, 50 millimetres in length, pass the thread, thread, and length of the thread, thread spacing is coarse, so it's a nice um, coarse, you know, widely spaced thread. So we're going to click on this one and we're going to use this. Okay, so left click to confirm. And, okay, so we give it a good click. And what happens here is, you could obviously, if you wanted to purchase these bolts for yourself, you could press this button and order these components, okay? So what you want to do is we actually want to download the CAD data, okay? And for this, we don't want to use SOLIDWORKS, we want to use STEP files, okay? I'm going to put forward a little bit of advice here. Sometimes in your assemblies, you will build components that require 100 bolt assemblies. So that's 100 bolts. 200 washers and 100 nuts. If possible, when using your step file, use a 3D step with no threads. It's going to take away the thread detail. If you need the thread detail, you can bring it through, that's fine. But if possible, just, just use 3D step and no threads. Okay? So when you download this, it's going to place a component in our assembly here. Okay? So it's going to drag away, give us some space. Okay? I'm just going to bring through some more components, so I'm just going to bring through, so back into master car, I'm going to bring through a nut to associate with this, so nut, uh, metric, I want it to be M10, because I've got an M10 bolt, and thread pitch, I need to make sure my thread pitch aligns, I'm going to go 1.5, and I'm going to just go for, let's see what we got, we've got, we'll go for a hex head, we've got a hex head, yeah, we'll go for a hex head, and we'll bring through something nice and simple, Metric medium strength, steel hex nut, class 8. Okay, what it says here, class 8 nuts are comparable in strength to class 8.8 volts and are suitable for fastening most machinery and equipment. So for what we're looking at here, um, this should be fine. Okay, so we're going to click this here. Again, we're going to scroll down and we're going to define what we, the one we want. So we have different types. We're going to steel class 8. We could you know, go for different um, zinc plated nuts, etc. We're just going to go for a steel class 8 nut. We left click this component here and it's pre selected 3D step, no threads. Again, if we wanted the threads, we could go for the plain 3D step. We want to have it without the threads to save us some CAD data. So we download this and we bring it in the nut for us. So again, I'm just going to pull this away to the side, give us some space. Okay. And the last component we want to bring in is a washer, but we need two of them. So what we're going to do for this is type in washer in the search bar. We could select washer here if we wanted. So we could select here, standard washers, metric for the system of measurement, and we want it to be M10. General purpose washer is fine for us just now. We need to worry about an aluminium or that. Just going to go for stainless steel, plain washer, and use that. Okay. Stainless steel washer, and we're just going to go for, we can just go for one that's hardness rated, so it's had some mechanical testing on it, that's fine. Not rated, for what we're looking at here is, is fine. Just going to go for this one here. 3D step, doesn't have any thread or a washer, I'm going to download this, okay? Okay, look, so we need a second washer, so essentially the best way to do this is clicking on here, clicking on the component, right clicking, we're clicking copy, we could press Control c with the same, and the top level we're going to type is paste, okay? Not too fussed about, so for this one here, maybe we do want to catch the position um, because if it caps the position, the components will stay where they are. If we didn't do that, so we'll quickly show you that. So if I just delete this washer just now, 
right click, copy, and if I paste it on here, um, okay, the position hasn't changed. What would happen is if I move those components, um, let's just do this, I'm going to delete this. So this is the capture position down here, so I delete this, it's going to put them back to where they originally come in. So what happens when you capture the position is, it stays, so if I move this and I capture it, okay, on the timeline, the components are locked in that position, it's just a, an alignment, okay. So I'm going to delete that just now, okay, and I'm just going to bring them back out all together, okay. And I'm just going to place my components here. Okay, so that's how I've copied, I've copied the purpose, I've copied the general purpose washer, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to join them into the assembly, okay. So I'm going to select the first washer, and just using the, the join command, I'm going to select this face here, and I'm going to align the middle of that face to the middle of this part here. Okay, as we can see, we can't really see the washer, and to adjust that, all we need to do is click flip. Okay, as we can see, we can actually rotate this just now, and that's not what we're looking for. And if you go to the motion um, submenu, we still have Re Re Revolute selected, and that just means the last joint that I used was a Revolute, and we don't want that. We want to make sure it's ready, we don't want that washer to move. So make sure that just um, the motion has been selected as rigid, okay? So we're then going to apply this washer here and we're going to lock it on to this face here and again, Revolute is defined, okay? No, sorry, it's not, it's rigid, that's fine, we can adjust it, okay? That's fine, that's fine, okay? So we want to make sure um, rigid is um, defined. I can still adjust its initial axis, okay? Well, let's just leave it as zero degrees but the difference between that and Revolute is if I press OK, I can't rotate it. Just now. It's hard to see with the washer, but um, if I had Revolute, I could essentially spin it and rotate it around. We want to make sure the rigid, um, the rigid joint has been applied. Okay, so let's apply and constrain the nut. So the nut, we want to select this face here, select the midpoint, and we want to join it on to this washer here. Okay, that's perfect there. Still plenty of space. Hit OK to confirm, and the last piece for this uh, M10 bolt assembly is the bolt itself. So using the joint command, we're going to select this face here, snap to the middle, and we want to align it, oops, we want to align it, this face here, on the edge, on the middle, sorry, okay. So that means the bolt is going to the central axis of the main holes, the washer, and the nut, okay. So that's how we can bring our components in, that's how we can build a sub-assembly of it. What we want to do here is, we actually want to do some housekeeping. This is a really um, good work in practice to make your tree, your component tree, a little bit easier to view. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to go to the top level assembly, right click, create a new component, okay? And we actually want to name the component M10, oops, M10 bolt assembly. Okay, and how okay. That's going to create a component at the bottom of our tree here, so M10 bolt assembly. What we want to do is we're going to go back to the top assembly now, so activating the top assembly. We want to select the four components that make up our M10 bolt assembly. Okay, so right now if we want to turn these off or adjust them, we need to select them individually. But if we select them all here, have them all highlighted, left click, and drag them, hover them over the M10 bolt assembly and drop them in there. It brings them in as this one as sub assembly. I can now have full control over that component. Okay. So what we're going to look at here, the final, the final um, part of this video is to see how we can create um, copies of this bolt assembly. So we want to make sure this M10 bolt assembly is connected through all four of these holes on either side of the heavy moon flange, okay? The best way to do this, if you know the value, okay, so say if we, if we know the distance between this hole and this hole, okay? And it tells us the distance is 
0.39. So same the distance as 88.39. Okay. We could use the pattern tool. So if you go to create, we go to the pattern. We could select rectangular pattern. Okay. We could select, so we change the type here to components. We could select M10 bolt. The direction is going to be along this axis. So it's going to go this way. Okay. We're now creating copies of this component. Okay. The quantity, we would only want to be 2. Okay. And the distance, we would want to be minus 88.39. Okay. And that would place the component in there. Okay. And hit OK to confirm. Okay. We need to apply the joints because the joints haven't been constrained. Okay. And again, we could do the same to pattern down the way. And um, if we knew the size, we could measure the holes. So from here to here gives a size of 88.39. But sometimes you don't, it's hard to work out the exact size. It can be a little bit tedious. So sometimes I prefer to go down the route of um, copying over and um, applying the joints almost manually. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, so now we have the bolt deleted. Let's copy over and recreate our joints. So we're going to take this M10 bolt assembly. We're going to right click on the component, or we're going to right click on the assembly, and we're going to select copy. You can also press Ctrl C to do this. And then control V in the model space. Okay, so we're going to just copy this one over. What we're going to do here is the nut and the washer are constrained, and the um, bolt to the nut are also joined together. Okay, so we're going to create four copies of these. Sorry, we're going to create another three copies. So control V, and we're going to drag it on over. And we're going to go control V and drag it on over. Okay. For a few ways you could do this, you could have set this up to the start, you could have measured the size between um, the, the faces and then defined the size of um, the components that way. There's, there's two or three ways we, we could do this, um, but we can show you the way something that I prefer to do it. So I'm going to put the nut onto here, and to OK, and I'm going to go and put the washer and bolt in here. Okay, and then just repeat. So if you know the process here, feel free again to fast forward to this point. Again, putting that in here, making sure that it's rigid. Yep, it is. And again, snapping the center point of the washer, putting it into the center of the hole here. And finally, putting the last nut washer bolt assembly onto here okay and oops give us a little perspective join it selecting it and placing it in through here okay so that's what we can put components in there is two or three four or five ways you can do that like i said we could have set up the size um straight away so that also, we could measure the size between each hole and we could have defined the gap between the spaces and put it in that way. Um, something that I just like to be sure that all my joints are constrained. Okay, so there's one last piece of housekeeping that I want to show before we conclude this video. And again, it's just aligning these sub assemblies into another folder. So I'm going to right click on the top level, create a new component, I'm just going to label it as um, fasteners. Okay. Fasteners, OK to confirm. Top level, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and drop them in there. OK, I'm going to put all of our um, bolt assemblies into here. So that means if you turn this eye on and off, hide all the fasteners, they'll disappear. OK, so thanks for tuning in to this video, everyone. I will see you all in the next one.
Hello everyone and welcome to the second last video in this assembly modelling tutorial series. We're now getting to the back end of our assembly modelling process and we're now looking at some of the techniques um, which really improve the downstream process processes such things such as um, motion studies, assembly drawings, um, things along those lines. So what we're going to look at is how we can create some joint limits and for this um, case study, this ball valve assembly, we're going to be looking at how we can restrict the movement of the lever which essentially in turn restricts the position of the ball in C. Okay, so let's quickly, so again we, if we ever want to take a position back to where it started, we can click the position tab in the top right and left click revert position. Okay, give me a couple seconds, it will load and go back to the start position. Okay, so let's look at our reference file. So now our reference file and our developed file we've built throughout this video series are almost carbon copies. Okay, the difference is on the reference file we have the joint limits set up. So we are restricting the movement of the ball, essentially restricting the valve handle into the closed and open position. Okay, so what we're going to look at on our develop model so we can set this up and the joint we're going to be focusing on is this revolute joint here okay and this revolute joint in turn you know creates this this, this revolution this this, um, this rotational movement of a handle through to a handle shaft through to the ball itself okay which acts as a seal turning the water or the oil to flow through the component or in turn block off the flow of liquid okay so what we want to do is so what we're going to look at first is I'm going to go to the top down view. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so I click on the revolute joint. I can see the joint here. Okay, and if I double click into it, oops, sorry, another one there. If I double click into the flag here, I get a better perspective. Double click. So highlight it there. Double click. We can manually punch in the degrees of the joint. Okay, we can also you know adjust it by the handle. So right now this is zero degrees. Okay. If we go clockwise, we're going anti, so, we, so it's going into the minuses. So we want to work it out going positive. So anti clockwise gives our um, positive degree of rotation. Okay, or the rate of 360. Okay. So essentially, what you want to do is if we look at it in this position, with the handle flowing through, going straight through um, the linear axis of the component, we can see if the handle is straight, essentially the flow of um, fluid can flow directly through it. If we restrict it through, let's put a drag up through to 90 degrees, we go to this front view, we've completely blocked off the flow of fluid. So we want to edit our joint limits between 0 and 90. Okay. And in a real world situation, this the lock lever, the lock lever here would be up against the rest, but for the demonstration purposes of this series, we want to fix this with the joint limits. Okay, so we want to fix it between 0 and 90 degrees. So I'm just going to put this back to 0 and press enter. Okay, to set up the joint limits, we want to click on the specific joint itself. Okay, Rev10. You can double click and name this, so maybe a good working practice to name this as um, handle revolve. Okay, so I'm just a good working practice. Sometimes I do name joints or constraints so it's easy to reference back to. Okay. So we click on this handle revolve revolute joint, right click, we can edit the joint limits, okay. So we have rotate, which is the, obviously the, the movement we're looking for, we have the minimum, the maximum and the rest and we also have animate. So I click animate, we can revolve it in, okay. I'm going to pause that just now and I'm going to click on minimum and maximum, okay. So if I drag this one here, this is essentially saying the minimum is going to minus 90. We want to leave minimum on zero degrees, okay? And if I drag this one here, it takes it through to 90, which is in turn what we're looking for, okay? So press OK, the joint limits should be activated. And if I now click on the handle, I can only take it through to 90 degrees, okay? Which is essentially allow my ball valve to be in open position and in the closed position, okay? 
And if I go back into the Revolve to Revolt, I set it to, oops, the wrong one there. If I right click and click on Edit Joint Loops, I can, if I say just the max to 180, just for demonstration purposes, pressed OK. My degree of freedom goes through to 180, okay, but we want to set up ours for 90 degrees, essentially mimicking that closed and open position of the ball and seal. Okay, is that okay? And we can get to 90 and we can get to 0. Okay. Again, you can always go to the better position, it'll go back to the initial position it was at when you applied the joint. Okay. And you can also do some fun stuff with this. The joints and you know applying the limits end up being a complicated cell. You can animate the joint and it'll go back and forth to that 90. And you can see it as um, looking in that closed and open position. Okay. So a nice little tool there as well. You can drop out the, the animation by pressing escape and it'll go back to that closed position. Okay. So this is a super important part and this will lead on to the assembly drawing video series which will be the following series after this. Um, so that was how to set up joint limits in Fusion 360 and how we can utilise them to display the true mechanical limits of components. So thanks for tuning in everyone and I will see you all. Hello everyone and welcome to the final video in this assembly modeling tutorial series. In this video we'll be looking at how we can save our assembly file and then export the file itself. So it's super critical that you understand how to export your Fusion 360 assembly file because as a part of your assessment you will be asked to provide the assembly file as supporting evidence. So the process itself is the exact same as exporting a part model, the only thing that will differ is the file type itself. So first of all we're going to save, so I'll go to the save button, we're going to left click here and we're going to save the version description, just leave it as user save. If you want to name it something specific that's up to yourself, I personally like to keep mine as user, user save and if you see the version you change it up here anyway. You can change the milestone to um, full complete assembly, something along, along those lines essentially, it's important that you name it um, something that you remember and you understand what that milestone, that completion um, represents. Okay, so we're okay to confirm, we've, up, we've updated and we've saved our file type. So what we want to do now is we want to exp export this data so we can have access to it down the line and to um, submit for our assessment. So to export the file, we want to click the file drop down up here. We're going to left click to activate the drop down and we want to go to export. So the name you can just leave as it is. Um, if you want to change it to something again you understand that's up to yourself, but it's important that you name it in a proper convention style so you understand what it is. It really represents the component that you've designed. So the file type is almost the exact same as a component level um, say, but what it's typing here is all desk Fusion 360 archive files. Then we have open bracket, asterisk, dot, F, C, Z, close bracket. So it's almost the same as the um, part file, but I changed the letter, we have a Z here. The location, this is going to be super important for yourself. And you want to make sure you're saving it to a location you have access to. So essentially you have access to the file. Okay, so I'm going to change the location and I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And I'm going to click save. As you can see, my location's changed to C users um, CB421E uh, forward slash desktop. So, again, I want to reiterate the point it's important that you have access to this safe location because you're going to be asked to provide the file for your um, sim, um, assessment submission. Okay, so once we happen to the location, we want to go to export and we want to export the assembly file. So this process will take longer than a traditional um, component model because there's more data to export from the software. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, now that we have our file exported, we can double check that we have access to the location. So in the action point, we can click on Show in File Ex Explorer. 
and it'll take its current location. So when you see this PC, Windows users, CD421E, and it's in the desktop. Okay. Close that down, close this down. So thank you for tuning in for this video series, everyone. I hope you've learned the process of assembly modeling, how you can um, develop assemblies, create joints, joint limits, using the master car library to bring in standard components, and then ultimately saving and exporting your assembly data. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next